Welcome to My Hometown, the program that explores clubs, organizations, businesses, and issues across Nassau and Suffolk counties and sheds light on the different towns that are making a difference. Hello and welcome to My Hometown. I'm Bill Horan, along with my co-host, Stacy Rain. Bill, today we are going to meet the founder of a website that exists to help everyone remember our veterans, remember our American history, and let others know that veterans will not be disenfranchised. That's right, Stacy. Our guest today is Long Islander Eric Spinner, the founder and webmaster of WeAreVets.us. And the website, just to be clear, is we-r-vets.us. Eric, welcome to my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Thank you much. It's a pleasure to be here. Eric, tell us about this organization. Uh, several years ago, I guess about uh, three and a half, I decided because I'm a member of many different organizations and the fact that many of those organizations all funnel their information into very small channels. They function in their own little cubby hole, and they don't interact. I wanted a common watering hole where these organizations could go and share their information with other organizations and the general public. And that led me to found We Are Vets. So if someone wanted to know something that they would have to go searching for, et cetera, they, you're kind of the repository. You would be the first person I would think to go to and ask if, if I was doing a show on it or a project or a book report or something. Yeah, to a great extent, yes. Now, some of the organizations are not always forthcoming. They're not actively involved. But I provide them with a the page, and they are welcome to give me information anytime, which I'll post. Fantastic. So, you know, I know you're a veteran. Can you tell us a little bit about your service and about yourself? Actually, my, my service life, which I do miss, was very interesting but very safe. Mm -hmm. It was during the Vietnam era, and in 1965, I was fortunate enough to have a friend in the Jamaica Armory who said, you know, we need somebody in the radar section with your skills because we need a radar mechanic. Oh, cool. Now, this was counter-artillery radar. And uh, somehow my name got pushed ahead of a lot of other names. And I found that on June 1st, 1965, I was sworn into the National Guard. Wow. Well, it happened to have been good timing because five days later, I actually got my draft notice. Oh. And I was able to walk around the corner and play some games with the uh, supervisor over at the draft board, who was rather disgruntled by the time I left. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have a sense of humor, and I like uh, playing with people's emotions sometimes. Uh, <clears throat> and when people are power-hungry like the draft board, I decide I want to play my game. Yeah. So uh, I ended up starting six years in the National Guard, which I enjoyed very much. Uh, learned about the Army and how it functions. And oddly enough... Uh, although I was supposed to go away to uh, basic training within six months, usually four to six months, because President Johnson had raised the draft to 48000 that month, I ended up being delayed for a year and a half before I got to basic training. Oh. Now, what does a recruit do for a year and a half without training and without rank? Well, the answer is two letters, KP. <laughs> uh Every time we went for a drill, I got stuck on KP. I'm sorry, Eric, I'm I just going to interrupt. What is KP? What is KP? It's an Army acronym for Kitchen Police, okay. which means they stick you somewhere in the mess section, which is the kitchen, uh -huh. and you get one of the jobs to do all day, which could be serving the offices and, and the uh, cadre, or washing pots and pans, or cleaning the garbage pails, or helping the cooks. Well, I didn't like that because that, to me, is a waste of time. So I decided to ask my first my uh, warrant officer in the radar section if I could speak with the uh, first sergeant who gave me permission then to speak with the company commander. And I said, I would like to be assigned instead of KP, which is useless, put me on the duty roster when necessary. But please, on every drill, assign me to a different section, a different part of the unit. Mm -hmm. So I got the opportunity to work with the radio section, the wire section, the motor pool. I worked with the medics. I worked with the supply section. By the time I went to basic training, I had a pretty good idea of how the unit operated. That's neat. And it made me a better soldier. Yeah. So when I came back from basic training, 
I was still a, a, an E2, which is basically uh, one step above a buck private. Uh, I came back. They immediately gave me private first class. And in my remaining five and a half years, actually four and a half years, I made it through the rank of, to the rank of specialist fifth, which is the equivalent of a sergeant. Huh? I made my grade in minimal time. I was good. I really, I did what I needed to do, and I did it well. Now, Eric, from the time you were in the military, uh, I think you said about six years then, we'll use that number. That's a long time ago when you referenced 1965. Did you begin this organization, or you were you involved in Veterans Affairs then, or when did this come about as opposed to when you finished with your military service? It's a very interesting uh, etymology. Everything about you is interesting. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, you know, normally speaking, those who come out of the military, if they know what they're going to do, it's either military related or it's totally unrelated. Well, I came out and I was in the aerospace industry at the time, oh. which I continued in. I had been in the aerospace industry for a few years. Uh, my initial degree was in electrical technology and uh, it was a two year associate's degree. And with the draft board breathing down my neck, I decided to join the National Guard, and I dropped out of school temporarily. Well, here it is, 1970. I've been in the aerospace industry now for about three and a half, four years, and the opportunity came up to become a teacher in New York City. So I took the exam to become an industrial arts teacher, and I did that for 23 and a half years in the classroom, uh, in the inner city New York City high schools, wow. which, of course, was another experience. And you have no visible scars from that? No visible All scars, right. mental or physical. All right. <laughs> now, I actually, I actually missed that job because the tougher the kids were, the better I worked with them. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it was my military bearing and uh, the reputation which I developed in the schools, which was spinners nuts, don't mess with them. <laughs> and it was wonderful. That's always a good reputation. It's a good students. reputation. Uh, I would say roughly half the kids thought I was nuts, and the other half loved me. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you have people come, reaching back to you and saying, hey, you made a huge impact on me. I bet you. I've I had a that about few. You. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's like your high school friends, they all kind of go different directions. Yeah. It's very rare that I'll run into somebody. But I've done some events with other organizations where I, we have civilians coming in. And all of a sudden, somebody will come to me and say, you know, my mom went to your school. Oh. And it turns out she was there and knew me when I was teaching. Yeah. So, you know, the world keeps at six degrees of separation, no matter how you go. Yeah. We're, we're all related somehow. That's true. That's now, true. W w from there, you've been teaching now. We took you through the Army, uh, 23 years of teaching. Where did We Are Vets come in? Actually, much later. It was about 14 years ago. I actually, my stepson ran for uh, Congress in the fourth CD, oh. and uh, unfortunately he was unsuccessful. Uh, I won't get into the politics of it, it's unimportant. We all know Nassau County politics. <laughs> anyway, uh, in his 2010 campaign, we were going over to the Nassau County, uh, it's the, uh, the theater over there, and they were doing the annual salute to the veterans in August. Mm -hmm. He wanted to campaign. And when we got over there, I said, you know, this is not the place for you to campaign, but we are going to meet a lot of veterans. So if you want to walk around, if you have your badge on, that's fine. But we're not going to approach anyone. It's not right to election year here. Mm -hmm. Well, I ran into a bunch of guys from the Elmont American Legion Post and Chapter 82 of Vietnam War Veterans. And I got to chatting with some of them. And one of the guys, Sal Martella, and I got to blame him for my involvement. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, you're a veteran. Why don't you come on, come on down to the Elmont Post? Come on and see what it's like. Maybe you'll join. So I went. I got my DD-214 copy, and I put it in my pocket, and I said, let me go down and see what it's like. I went down there one evening in November when they had their meeting, and I walked in. It was like a, a reunion. Uh -huh. I came in the door, and I got such a big welcome. I said, you know, I'm going to join tonight. Nice. The rest is history. I was a member of the Elmont Post up until about three years ago when I transferred to the Williston Post. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I'm chaplain at the Williston Post. Next year, I'll be elected commander. Uh, they've been after me for a couple of years to run. Yeah. I am a Legion rider now for 
Oh, I guess uh, 13 years. What does that mean, Eric? Uh, American Legion has a, uh, sub- a subgroup of family uh, portion called the American Legion Riders. Uh, we're not a motorcycle club. We are Legionnaires, uh, veterans who ride. Oh, literally. I thought that literally. was something like a no, term motorcycles. within there. No, mm-hmm. motorcycles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At, at age 80, I'm happy to say I'm still on a... Uh, uh, an 800-pound Harley Davidson. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and so all of these different organizations that you are with, they all kind of, they have parts of your website, right? So that you're kind of yes. pulling all of these different pieces in to make sure that people can find um, the information they need. You know, tell us a little bit more about about the website. Yeah. Uh, the website, when I began a couple of uh, three years ago, actually, uh I decided I wanted to have a watering hole for everybody. Mm -hmm. I wanted everybody to come out of their literal closet and join me in a a common ground, someplace where all veterans, civilians, even children could go because we have nothing on there that's rated X. (laughs) It's all accurate history. Yeah. Uh, It's historical facts. Uh, There is minimal politics involved except historical political analysis. So you can find history on the website, too. Uh, you can find history. There is a lot of information there about campaigns in World War II. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a page up for the Jewish War veterans, and there is a lot of information there on why we fought World War II, anti-Semitism, uh, even some current stuff about what's going on. Mm-hmm. So you can probably find something for everybody on that site. I want to take a minute to remind our listeners that you are listening to My Hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Stacey Rain here with Bill Horan, and we're learning about a website that exists to help everyone remember our veterans, remember our American history, and let others know that veterans will not be disenfranchised. Our guest is Long Islander Eric Spinner, the founder and webmaster of WeAreVets.us. And the website, to be clear, is We-R-Vets.us. Covers everything there. Mm -hmm. Now, Eric, you make it sound so simple, but we were talking before the show, and uh, if you sent in a resume, it would be about two or three pages, and I'm talking about just what your organization does. Uh, Tell our audience some of the things you get involved with in the wearevets.us. Actually, the sky is the limit. I never know what's going to happen from one day to the next. Sometimes I'll be putting up some event information. All of the organizations will send me their flyers hopefully digitally, so I don't have to scan them and redo them. Uh, I will put them up on their own individual page. And if I feel it's really something that's important for all of the organizations to pay attention to, I'll put it on the events page, which covers everybody. Uh, We have up there fundraisers. We have announcements of uh, basically TAPS notices for those we lose. Uh, I will write very often a eulogy for the person if I knew him or her because we have male and female veterans. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a a page there for the Blue Star Moms. Mm. Uh, These are the moms who have the children in service. And some of them, their children have returned from service, and they, of course, stay active with the organization. There are so many different directions to turn. How did you get started? You took us to 2010. You joined up but that you became the one now, the repository of all this information, and it seems to just be growing. It's like a library where everybody donates books. Now they come to you and say, we're having a a fundraiser, we're having a meeting, we're having an organization, or a new group starting. Uh, Can you do that all? I guess you can by yourself. Obviously, I have to. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't found anybody else yet to work with me Mm -hmm. uh, who understands my concept of what the website should look like how it should function. Uh, I have some people who understand what needs to go up so they know what to send me. Uh, I get uh, pre-formatted information. And, of course, I do a little rearranging. I do a little editing. uh, To me, it has to be – it has to appear Mm -hmm. eye-pleasing. That's like a TV show. Uh, You know know your camera movements. You know your transitions. You know what people are going to be drawn to. And you know what turns them off because I'm very sensitive to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I look at a website which is poorly done, I don't bother staying on it. I want something that's going to attract me and then hold my attention. And I, as a teacher, 
I have a fairly good understanding of how to hold an audience. Yeah. Because I taught for 20, I was 23 and a half years working in front of a hostile audience. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say that as you were talking before you mentioned it, that as a, te- a teacher has to know that to go with the flow of the class. Some days you might have to go off topic to keep them just in their seats and from jumping out of the windows. But you obviously know that and now you're applying it. What, what a great way to take your natural teaching ability and degrees and turn it into something else. Well, it's adapt and improvise. It's thinking on the run. Uh, it's all of those things that we were taught in the military. I was about to say. A yeah. situation is going to come up, and of course I carried that into my teaching. A situation is going to arise where you have to think on your feet. And I've had several in teaching which were perfect examples of that. Yeah. But you also learn to function under pressure, and very often you do things which you've been trained to do which you didn't expect you would have to do after the military. I fortunate enough, unfortunate enough, depends on your point of view. Uh, at one of the schools I taught at in the city, I was there for two shooting incidents. Mm. I rendered first aid on one. Wow! I was on the subway with the shooting as far away as I am to either one of you. Uh, I was so close I saw the muzzle flash. And when everybody panicked and ran out of the car, I just stepped to the side and I rendered first aid. Mm. It, it's what you're trained to do and it's how you react in the, in the heat of the moment. Right. Stacey, we're going to see a movie of the week about Eric. I'm sure that's coming out. Because uh, you've, you've covered all the bases. You could do five episodes because if, if we go to, what, what's that, Hallmark Station or something? This is at least four or five. Now you, now you have to have a love interest in there or something. <laughs> well, but other than that, you're, you're set. You're perfect. No, we can't go the Hollywood route. Can't do that? Okay. <laughs> so you mentioned that Blue, your website's for veterans. is for Blue Star Moms. It's not just for people who are serving or family members serving, No, right? not at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm about to put up another page for a good friend who uh, became a friend over the past few years. Every year we do the veteran stand down. And our, uh, my friend Lonnie Sherman, whom I will be interviewing this afternoon for a TV show, mm-hmm. uh, he developed a group called General Needs. They're based in Comac, and they come to veterans' events with a truckload of sneakers, sweatshirts, underwear, you name it. And uh, he's going to be doing a fundraiser in May. And I will be putting his information up on the site so we can attract more people to support his fundraiser. Mm -hmm. Because he does this on a volunteer basis. I have a page I'm putting up for the Nassau County, uh, uh, the Firefighters Operation Wounded Warriors. Mm -hmm. And without casting aspersions on any other group, this group is 100% volunteer, unlike the one that'll send you a blanket for $19 a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't have a payroll. Everything is 100% donated time. Yeah. And so you're a repository for all these different organizations to make sure that there's a place that people can go to get the information they need as it relates to veterans. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, Eric, I'm just thinking as you're talking. Um, we're going to get let you do, in quotes, a commercial. Uh, among people who might be out there who've been in the military, do you need accountants or marketers or scientists or, or merchants? And I'm, I'm not kidding when I say this. In other words, do you need inside people? Do you need restaurants to contribute? Do you need people who are good at fundraising or shaking the tree? Well, at this point, you know, the, the $160 a year it costs me to maintain the site is not a big piece out of my pocket. Would it be nice to have some income from it? Sure. But it's not why I do it. I do it because I love doing it, and I want people to be informed. I want to bring people together. Uh, it's, it's more of a public relations and uh, humanity-based issue. No, I don't, I don't really need anything coming in. I don't, if I take any commercials, it's only for nonprofit organizations who do what I do or help the veterans. Uh, I'll put up anybody's information who is doing something for vets because they are my family and they're the ones I owe my time to. Did, did you ever think in life this is where your life would take you, that you'd be doing something no, like this? No, I never had a clue. <laughs> uh, life goes where life goes. Doors open, doors close, and I'll walk through all those doors. I yeah. don't care if I don't see, well, like what I see on the other side, I'll walk back out and go <laughs> a different direction. Bill, one thing I've learned about Eric is he's got some good one-liners, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think we should have a show just with his line. We can learn a lot. I get a lot of advice from just his little quips. Yes, this could be. Well, we've already had, uh, what was the, 
uh, the two doors, yeah. door number door A or door B. Right. <laughs> Well, so what kind of skills did you have when you decided, like, I'm going to make this website where, you know, I can get all this information for anybody who needs it. Did you have the skills already or did you have to find, you know, did you have to build the skills? What what did you have to do? I think I basically had the skills because uh, being a teacher, being a shop teacher especially, every, everything is by procedure. Mm-hmm. And uh, doing a website is basically following a procedure and a process. Uh, I took my first programming courses in 1969 on the old IBM 80 card system. As a matter of fact, I took them in Valley Stream uh, at a private school for three weeks while I was in the aerospace industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't make anything of it. I didn't do very much to follow up on it. But anything you do is part of the database. It's part of the knowledge base. And nothing I've done in my life has been wasted. Yeah. Uh, it all adds to who I am and what I'm able to do and what I'm able to call back from memory to put into practice. Uh, I've uh, always been fairly literate. Uh, my parents were both teachers and would have shot me if I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> even though I didn't, I barely graduated from high school, uh, that was because I was rebelling against my p- teacher parents. Ah. And they never understood that. Yeah. But I managed to make it, and somehow I even came to Nassau Community on uh, three sabbaticals, and uh, I'm on the dean's list here. Oh, nice. Now, Good it's, job. A, it's a while since I studied here, but I always love coming back. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take a minute to remind our listeners again that you are listening to My Hometown on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Stacy Rain here with Bill Horan, and we're learning about a website that exists to help everyone remember our veterans, remember our American history, and let others know that veterans will not be disenfranchised. Our guest is Eric Long Islander, Eric Spinner, the founder and webmaster of WeAreVets.us. And the website, to be clear, is We-R-Vets.us. Eric, uh, does We Are Vets serve any non-veterans or people who haven't been in the military, or is, is there any attachment there? Uh, not a direct attachment, but uh, if if there are people out there who want to uh, go to the website, they're welcome to learn. Uh, it's an informational site. It's a communication site. It's a place where people can come together. Uh, I do, uh, with other veterans organizations, we go to the schools and we talk about veterans, what they did, what they do, who we are, opportunities in the military. And uh, I'm a very strong advocate for military life for those who think they can handle it. I have several friends whom you're probably aware of, Bill Gala, who's one of the county, uh, county legislators. Uh, he is a uh, colonel, I think an honorary general now wow. in the uh, National Guard. And uh, we speak all the time about the fact that the military is a parallel universe to civilian life. Mm. Okay. That anything yep. you want to learn for a career, you can do it in the military. You can learn how to be a mechanic. You can learn how to be a lawyer. You can learn how to be a medic. You can learn how to go. You can do your pre-med in the military and the and your medical training. Yeah, there is nothing you can do in civilian life that you can't do in the military, and the government pays for it. And it's a good career too. You know, my, my husband yeah. and I started out at the same time, but he went into the Marines, and I did my thing in nonprofit organizations. Mm-hmm. And you know, just watching his growth and his leadership skills, I mean, it's it's incredible over the years. So yeah. I agree. Yeah, I know a couple of the gunnies over there where yeah. your, your husband is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great, great folks. Yep, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> now, Eric, uh, are there any specific age groups you particularly work with, m- meaning your organization, or that you find appeal to the veterans more? I think mostly military age, uh, especially those who have served in the military. Uh, one of the groups I work with is... Uh, Uh, Nassau Police Veterans Association. These are police in Nassau County who were veterans. Mm. And uh, they just recently erected their their new monument over at Eisenhower Park at the Veterans Memorial Field. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was an integral part of that because of my involvement with the United Veterans Organization. Anybody is welcome to, to come and see the site and pass out the name. You know, if you if you go there and you like it, tell a friend. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have a question, Bill. I think this is important. What um, veterans organizations are you not involved with? 
I think that's the question here. You seem uh, to know everything about yeah. Nassau veterans. I am involved with all of them, but I can't be a member of several. Okay. I can't be a member of disabled American veterans because I'm mm-hmm. not disabled. Yep. I can't be a member of the Veterans of Foreign Wars because I didn't serve outside the country. Right. Uh, I can't be a, a, a member of the Military Order of the Purple Heart because I was not in combat and did not get injured. But you have all the information for all of those should mm-hmm. people need it. So that's I work what, with all of them. Yep. So if, if people need that information, they go to your website. Yes, it's all mm-hmm. there. Yep. And I keep adding more every day. And if, if someone doesn't know the organization they're looking for, can they go to your website and say, you know, I'm looking for something along these lines, and they'll, they'll find kind of a category or something like that? If they go to Veterans Organizations, which is one of the menu items, mm-hmm. there's a drop-down menu which lists all of the organizations on the website. Okay. There is also another one which is Veterans Service Providers. Okay. That lists the VA hospital in Northport. It lists the uh, Long Island State Veterans Home in Stony Brook. And I'm very friendly with the folks out there. I make mm-hmm. a lot of visits donating goods. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are links to all of the organizations. All right. And I put up anything they'll send me. Yeah. Great. And now, Eric, just quickly, uh, you said you put out the money for all this. If there's uh, somebody out there you'd like to appeal to, can a group help you with uh, funding for some of the activities? Uh, actually, at this point, I would say No. Only for the simple reason that, number one, I don't want to be beholden to anybody. (laughs) I like my independence. Uh, Number two, $160 a year is a minimal charitable donation to me to make to do what I do. I love doing it. I I can see that, and I think it keeps you young. You're really someone inspiring, obviously very good at what you do, doing a lot for people, and just putting together a website where there's a place where everyone can go makes it certainly a lot easier for everyone. And, uh, you know, on behalf of everyone, we all thank you so much for well, what you're doing. Well, it's an honor to do it. <laughs> well, I think you're enjoying it and having a lot of fun and also making life a lot better for a lot of veterans out there. Hopefully so. Eric, we want to thank you for being here today. Our guest has been Eric Spinner. He is the founder and webmaster of wearevets.us. And the website, just to be clear, is we r vets us. Thanks so much for being here with us It's today. been an honor. Thank you. I'm Bill Horan. I'm here with Stacey Rain, and I thank you for listening to this week's episode of My Hometown. We'd like to get your feedback on My Hometown. Send your comments to whpc at ncc.edu. Nassau Community College, where success starts and continues. Till next time, this is Bill St. James. And remember, there's no town like your hometown. <laughs>